So Framer is an amazing no-code website builder. You can literally just press F on your keyboard, then draw a frame, then press T, click, write, then click publish. And then you have a link that you can just click and you have a website on the internet that is live, working. You can send it to your friends and it's pretty cool. You can use it really easily. However, sometimes you might run into issues and one of those issues might be creating a responsive navigation bar. Something like this right here. So something that basically transforms when you enter a mobile viewport and turns into this little drop down menu. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through step by step how you can create this responsive navigation bar in Framer without writing any code. So my name is Nandi, this is Framer University and let's get started. So as you can see, here we are in Framer and we have this little document here. Um, we have this main stack in our desktop breakpoint, but we are not gonna deal with this. It's just uh, so that we have some content on the website. But first, if I wanna create a navigation bar, I have to create a frame. So I'm gonna press F on my keyboard and draw something that looks a little bit like a navigation bar, something like this. So now we have this frame, it's blue, but we don't really care about that. We're gonna change the color really, really soon. But first, I'm gonna make sure that it is placed on the desktop level, so I'm not gonna nest it further down on the page. It's gonna be here under desktop, and I'm gonna call this nav. So usually the positioning is fixed on these uh, nav bars because we want to have them within our viewport as we scroll down the page. So that's what you gotta do if you wanna keep it in the viewport. If you want it to just scroll away, you can use a relative positioning, but we're gonna use uh, fixed positioning in this case. So as you can see, as I changed it to fixed positioning, we have these pins here. I can set these to zero on the left and the right, and also on the top to make sure that this navigation bar will stick to the right, to the left and to the top of my website. So if I start resizing this, you can see that it will always try to adapt to the different uh, width changes. So our navbar looks really great. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that it has a different color. So I'm gonna apply this gray color to it. And now it's pretty great. So this navigation bar will have a logo, a couple of links and also a button. So we can add those right now. So I'm gonna just uh, find my logo here, browse library and here it is. So I have my logo here and I can also add some text here. Let's say resources. Let's make sure that we have white color on the text so we can actually see what is happening. So as you can see, now these are placed here, but we can move them around freely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this nav into a stack by pressing this layout button. So now as you can see, these elements here within the nav are positioned according to these layout settings. So if I increase the gap, the gap will be increased between these items. So I can also duplicate this text and let's say I will have an about page and I will also have a shop on my website. So yeah, we have three links and I can also create another text for the get started button. I can wrap that get started button into a frame so we can add some background color to it. The height of this button will be 36 pixels and then the gap or sorry, the padding will be maybe 14 on the left and 14 on the right as well. And um, yeah, let's add a white fill color to this and also round its corners fully. And the text should be black so we can see it. Um, okay, it looks really great. Uh, what I will do is I will fix the text here because as you can see, it is selectable on the button, which is not really great. If you have interactive elements, we don't want them to be selectable uh, it, when it comes to a text layer. So user select none style is being applied to this text right now. And if I preview this again, I can click this, but it will not be selected anymore, which is really nice. Great, now we have most of the content that we need. We need one last element within this navigation bar, which will be the little um, menu button that you see right here on this mobile viewport. 
So this menu button needs to be created. So let's do that. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just draw a frame here on my canvas and I will remove the fail color from that. And then I will just draw this little frame within that, which will be white, of course. And then I will make sure that it is centered by pressing Option and H on my keyboard. Then I'm going to press Command D and then press the down arrow keys to move it down. And basically that's it. We have a menu now, so I can just paste this within our navbar. So it looks really great, but of course we need to have a closed state as well for this menu. So I'm going to turn this into a component and I will be able to create another variant um, which has that cross or is it a cross? It's yeah, I guess it's a cross. Maybe it's not Then I'm sorry. Um, menu. So this will be, um, this will be just menu and then I'm going to create another variant, which will be called close. And what I'm going to do here is just going to press option HV, option HV again on the other frame, and then just rotate these so we get this close icon. So now we have the menu with a close variant as well. Okay, we are on the right track to achieve our destination. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap these. Basically, I'm going to just group these frames together in a way that makes sense. So first of all, of course, these links need to be in a common stack. So I'm going to select all of them and then I'm going to press a very specific keyboard shortcut on my keyboard. So option agent enter is the shortcut that you need to remember if you want to be a framer expert. So after this happened, I can press shift A on my keyboard. So now the width is fit content and the height is fit content as well, which means that it is trying to fit the content inside. So if I add more text to this, it will automatically adopt. So it looks really nice. I can make sure that the gap is more, maybe 20 pixels and I can rename these two links. Okay. So now we have this links. We have the button here as well, which is not button, it's stacked, but I have to rename everything because I want to be able to look at my layers panel and know what is going on on my framework project. So now I can select the links and the button and wrap these in another stack. So this will be called links and button. And then, oh God, button. And uh, the gap will be 20. So yeah, this is great. And now we can actually wrap these two in another stack. So the logo and the menu will be in a common stack and this will be called logo plus menu. Great. However, I have to make sure that here on the desktop breakpoint, I don't really see the menu. So I will just hide it here. So now we have these. Of course, we could have them like this just in the middle, but I want to have the logo on the left and the rest on the right. So the way I'm going to achieve this is I'm going to select uh, those. So the logo plus menu and the links plus button and wrap them in another stack. So this stack will be called content and this will be fill width and the distribute here will be space between. Space between basically means that the first element is at the beginning and the last element is at the end of the stack. So that is really nice. But as you can see, if I have a really large monitor, the logo will be on the left and the other things will be on the right and it's, it will be just too much space. So I want to make sure that this content cannot be bigger than a certain size. So max of it is applied here with maybe not 100, but 1000 pixels. And now, as you can see, it will not grow bigger than 1000. But we can also see that if we look closely here, you see that we don't really have any space between the element. So in this case, the logo or the button and the edge of our little website. So to solve this, I'm going to select my navigation and then add padding on the right and on the left. So this basically solves that problem. Now, as you can see, we have that nice 20 pixel gap from the side. So now we have everything that we need. So all we have to do now is to basically turn this navigation bar into a component. 
So I'm going to select it and right click create component and let's create this navigation. Here we can see the component canvas. We have variant one. It is our primary variant. It is really important that we have to rename this to desktop. And then we don't really have to do anything on the primary variant. We can create our mobile variant here by clicking the variant button. And I'm going to rename this to mobile. And in order to, you know, uh, be able to tell how it will look on mobile, I will resize its width to 390. So now I'm going to start making some changes to this layout component so we get something presentable on mobile. So I think I'm going to make sure that the content here, um, as you can see, we have the logo plus menu and the links plus button here. So we can change the direction of this tag to vertical. So now these are right uh, below each other, which is pretty great. Also, the distribute can be start and then we can have a little more gap. And then also this mobile uh, variant can have fit content and then maybe vertical direction distribute set to start. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the logo plus menu here is set to fill with. So it fills up the available space here. And I'm going to also change the menu to visible. Yes, because now here on the mobile, we want to show this little menu. I'm going to then make sure that the logo is on the left and the menu is on the right. The way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to, you know, tweak these properties on the right panel, which is the stack properties. Space between basically gets us the exact same thing that we want. So height will be 60 pixels here. And then, yeah, that's it. Uh, I will make sure that we have a little more space here on the bottom because we have the 20 on the sides, but we also need 20 on the bottom. So that's going to be added here really easily. And then basically here, we need to do the same thing. We just have to change the direction of these stacks. So links plus button, vertical, and then links, vertical. That's it. That's how easy it is. So now we have mobile open. So I'm going to rename this to mobile open. And then I can create another variant, which will be mobile closed. OK, so now we have this mobile closed. What we are going to do here is I'm going to press the links plus button stack and just set the opacity to zero so we can no longer see it. And then what I do is I'll I simply just change the height of this uh, variant to 60 pixels and yeah, it's it's that easy. So now, as you can see, there's just one last thing that we have to do. We have to make sure that the menu is the right variant. So here it needs to be close and here it needs to be the menu. That's it. So now if we take a look at this, the great thing about Framer is I can just come here to the phone variant or the phone breakpoint and take a look at the navigation component. I have this variant property here on the right panel. I can just change that to mobile closed. So now, as you can see, we have the mobile closed variant on the phone breakpoint. If I take a look at this and resize the website, you can see that as I enter the mobile viewport, it changes to that variant. What I want to do is when I click this menu here, I want to go to the mobile open variant. So how can I do that? I will click into the component again, come back to the component canvas, and I will just add interactions to these. So it is really easy. You first have to select the element that you want to start the interaction from. In this case, I want to start the interaction from the menu. So I'm going to hit L on my keyboard. Now I can connect it to any variant that I want to go to. Of course, I want to go to mobile open when I want to go there on tap. I can also change it to tap start, mouse enter or any other trigger, but we're going to have tap here. So when we tap this, we go to mobile open. And when we tap the close, we want to go back to mobile closed. Basically, Framer will nicely and smartly animate between these states. If we take a look at this preview, I will click this. And yes, indeed, the menu icon animates really nicely. But there's an issue, we don't really see the content here. And that's because, as you can see, the height here is fixed, which basically means it's 60 pixels and it's not going to change 
no matter what. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the desktop and make the navigation fit content height. So that basically means that if we change to a variant that has bigger height, it will nicely adopt to that. So now if I take a look at this phone breakpoint, yes, indeed, if I click the menu, it nicely drops down and I can do whatever I want. If I want to add links to these text layers, because now these are just text layers, I can do that by coming here to the right panel, clicking these text layers and just adding links to them really, really easily. So yeah, that's it. That's how easy it is to create a responsive navigation bar in Framer. I hope that this video was helpful. If you want to learn more about Framer, you can go to Framer.University because I have a bunch of more free resources, tutorials, remixes, components, and great stuff that will basically help you learn Framer. So that's it for this video. Make sure to like it and subscribe for more. And I'm going to see you in the next one.